Andrew, midway through NBAA 2015, uh, you and I were discussing yesterday some of the many things that intrigued us from the floor, and I would imagine with your responsibilities at True Track, you've got a bunch of ideas for a place like this. But before we get into all that, tell me a little bit first about True Track, its mission, what you do, and more important, where are you going? At True Track, we're doing uh, autopilots primarily for the light sport and experimental markets right now. We've just released a new, or introduced, I'll say, a new product at Oshkosh this year that we call Eco. It's a small two-axis autopilot, fits in a standard two and a quarter round hole and it kind of breaks the mold for the way we've been doing autopilots in the experimental world at least I'll say. Instead of attaching to the primary aircraft controls it uses a small servo and a like a servo tab that attaches to the control surface. Also with ECO we've introduced what we call AEP, Automatic Envelope Protection. And AEP lets us set bank angles and pitch angles that we want to keep the aircraft within. Kind of like stability control for a car. It kind of runs in the background and does nothing most of the time. It's just one of the features that are included in this new ECO autopilot. You folks have been fairly disruptive with your technology. You're definitely innovators rather than the old rip-off and duplicate R&D system we know so well in various other venues. How does TrueTrack innovate and what information can you give the rest of this industry how they can be more innovative? What we try to do at TrueTrack is we try to use a clean sheet approach to solving problems that we see in the world today. You know, everyone in business wants to make money, right? We're here to keep our business going. But at True Trek, we also have a passion for aviation, and we do what we love. And it's my hobby, it's my career, it's all those things all rolled into one. So we try to find problems that need to be solved, like with the eco, solving this problem about loss of control. It's a very big buzzword right now, and the FAA is very much in tune with that and trying to help people like myself bring these new technologies out. Like I said, at Oshkosh, releasing this new technology, the FAA took great note, did presentations to the administrator, so we're very, very hopeful, actually, for what the future holds for moving this technology forward. One of the enemies that you and I have discussed uh, to the mutual disgust is the fact that innovation, to a certain extent, has become a target of litigation. Because if you're doing something differently, and for some reason or another that differently can be blamed, then you've done something wrong, dangerous, or otherwise deserve to lose everything in your life because a lawyer said so. The Van suit of recent note has disgusted everybody in the industry, but at the same time, it was a matter of time before something this egregious came to fore. What are your thoughts? True Track uses an RV-10 for our primary aircraft for travel to and from shows and for test bed and all that sort of stuff. We have 1,700 hours on our aircraft and we've had zero issues ever with the aircraft. This lawsuit against Vans poses great risk to not just folks like Vans who are in the experimental world a fairly large fish, but uh, even a small company like mine and there's hundreds others that support this aviation world that we all live in. If Vans is targetable, then we all are targetable as well. And we've talked about how the large aircraft manufacturers are now fairly protected from that, but now it's the parts providers that are at risk. And it is a huge fear of mine, one that I can't let keep me from doing what I love and what I know is the right thing to do. If, if we get sued about whatever and lose, then that's, that's how it goes, unfortunately. If this industry were allowed to use NTSB probable cause and evidentiary data, both as a defense as well as a counter to some of the false claims that are made in the initial part of every suit, and right. if loser paid, what kind of effect do you think that would have on the immense costs of litigation within the aviation industry and the fact that it's holding us back, and worse, in many cases, probably dampening innovation to the point where it may ultimately be responsible for killing people. Those two things would actually level the playing field. We don't play on a level field. We play on a field where it's almost like we are guilty until we are proven innocent. It's not, hey, here is a problem we see, let's help these manufacturers solve it. It's who can we blame for the problem that we're seeing? Who can we blame? How can we make ourselves feel better for this? And like you say, it's not a level field. We aren't given the tools to defend ourselves in these cases. We're not allowed to use them. We have the tools, but we're not allowed to use them. And these folks can make claims that are unrefuted and there's nothing we can really do about it. Are you confident in a prosperous, proper, positive future for aviation? I wish that I could say that I was confident, 
in a prosperous future for aviation. But aviation is not what it once was. It is, right now, it is dying. There's no doubt about that. You know, we have wonderful folks in the lawmaking area that are trying to help with that. Look at Senator Enhoff with the Pilots' Bill of Rights too. There are some really big steps that are attempted to be made there. Some of them will have to be phased back a little bit. But as you said, you know, as you and I were discussing, baby steps. We make baby steps. We can try to fix some of these problems so that we can build a good base. The problem right now is that people aren't interested in learning to fly. You were talking about being a kid watching through the fence. We don't build pilots here anymore because we don't have them coming out of the military and all those sorts of things. Not necessarily a bad thing. It is safer to fly a drone than it is to fly in a jet. But we're not creating pilots anymore like we once did, that's for sure. Andrew, I look forward to catching up with you at Sebring and uh, playing with some of your toys. That's the part I enjoy in this business the most. But midway through MBAA 2015, we appreciate your time. We're looking forward to seeing you at Sebring and Lakeland. And when we do that, let's go beat your material to, to death there. We'll have a good time. You bet. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, uh, we'll plan to bring the RV-10 down and show you some of the new stuff we're doing there and some of the old stuff and go fly and have a good time. We'll prove how undangerous that airplane is. Thank you, sir. Aero TV is brought to you by Meet Sam, the new 2-inch standby attitude module from Mid-Continent Instruments and Avionics. Sam's unique two-screen display features high-definition graphics and extra-wide viewing angles. Get to know Sam today. Visit flysam.com.